So start by coming into contact with your posture and bring a stable body awareness that invites relaxation as well as stability. So just mentally observe your body physically and see if you can ask it to settle and straighten and balance. Just a request to your own body. Engaging the muscles that need to be engaged and relaxing the muscles that don't need to be engaged. Putting in exactly the right amount of effort for you to stay balanced, but not adding any extra effort that isn't needed. No rigidity, no tightness. Asking that of your body. Strength that is not forceful. Relaxation that is not passive. using the mind to gently coax the body into settling, encouraging it to return to its natural state without tightness. and shift from a general body awareness to specifically awareness of the breath or some other small area where you can concentrate your attention and ground yourself physically. So simplify
simple and direct focus. And as you watch the breath, or whatever object that you've chosen, try not to anticipate. Try not to reminisce. Try to use that physical sensation to keep you grounded in the present. And when ideas and plans occur to you, or memories tempt you, just very gently and delicately disengage. Come back to focus. Be like a witness to your focal object, interested, engaged, but without commentary. and revive the motivation. Thinking may all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. 
May all sentient beings not be separated from higher rebirth and the bliss of liberation. May all sentient beings abide in the state of equanimity, free from attachment and hatred, free from holding some close and others distant. Just allow your mind to meet love, compassion, joy and equanimity once more. Meet and reawaken these ideas. and shift to analysis and think, first of all, when my mind is filled with love, there are obvious advantages, obvious peace of mind, obvious benefit to my relationships and my work. But very consciously try to remember what you're like when love is not as present or as prevalent. Bring to mind your cynical side or your skeptical side. A darkness or a depression or an irritability, annoyance. When something other than love is driving, something that stands in opposition to it. Just bring to mind a memory of when you're in a mood a bad one. Looking at that aspect of yourself objectively. How am I in that state? What am I like? Maybe it's how you are in traffic or running errands that you don't have time for. Maybe it's on certain kind of days with certain kind of people. The details don't really matter. Just be honest about how are you when love is not driving. What is your body like? Are you more likely to be low energy, have difficulty focusing and getting anything done? Or are you more likely to be tense and excessively busy and speedy? What is your body like when you're in a mood that is contrary to love? very personally and specifically.
And when you're in that bad mood, what is your communication style? Whether your texting style or email style or your style of speech, what changes when love has disappeared or has receded to the background? Do you have more to say or less to say? Are you blunt and abrupt or domineering and flood people with words? Or something else, it doesn't matter, but just try and find yourself in your communication style when you're in a bad mood. Revive that knowing, that self-awareness. Is there a difference in tone or pitch? Is there a difference in speed or volume? And what is your mental activity like when you're in a bad mood? When love has left your mind? Are your thoughts busy and verbal? Or is it just a dark cloud of heaviness or electricity? Are your thoughts boiling or freezing? Again, just awaken self-awareness. What are your thoughts like when love is not driving, when something opposite to love is driving?
and both the near and the far enemies of love are easy to identify when they're loud and large and overpowering. But what is the smallest version of these you can catch in yourself? What is the tiniest whisper of your mind going off track? The earlier you can catch it, the easier it's dispelled. The smaller it is, the easier to shift from. So what is the most minute form of non-love that you can identify within yourself? Maybe you notice changes in your body first or changes in your speech first, or changes in your thoughts first. Doesn't matter which it is, but just check. How soon can I catch these things that stand in opposition to a loving mind? How will I notice when I go off course? And take that self-knowing and imagine an ordinary day where something like anger or attachment is beginning to whisper into your consciousness. The first tiptoes into your psyche. Imagine the way that you will turn your focus towards it with a laser-like gaze that says, I see you, and I know that you are not love. What is the way to speak to yourself and notice these arisings within yourself that both accepts them as normal and also encourages them to pass? That believes that they have reasons to arise but doesn't necessarily agree with all the reasons or acquiesce to them. Knowing yourself, would it help to simply shift position from one room to another? Would it help to say something to yourself? A poem or a prayer, a mantra or a word to recalibrate you? Does it work to simply notice the mind has gone off track? And in that noticing, self-corrects. Just very personally and specifically ask yourself those questions.
How will I come back to my heart when my heart begins to close? How will I encourage it to stay open? And you can leave your mind just curious about that, watching for those opportunities to stay in alignment with your path and dedicate. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen, arise and grow. And may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. May the precious view of emptiness that has not arisen, arise and grow. And may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. And you can relax your attention. <laughs>